Okay, what are you doing over here? You're making a mess. Tell them there, <clears throat> People get pissed off if I don't have a damn towel on my workbench. Really? I don't understand the workbench is an ankle drum. Screw them. Okay. I got I super can't D. Do, I can't. Uh, uh, B, E. E. I don't know how to put the spring down. What holds the spring okay, He wants to know why there's black carbon everywhere. Yeah. Because your motor sucks. That's burnt on carbon. And it was only from here, in, and the intake manifold's got it on it too. That's because it's been backfiring a bunch due to the intake system. So maybe some O-rings or something maybe? It's a lot of backfiring. Constant backfiring does that. Stops at the throttle valve, that's why it doesn't go through dirty. Mm -hmm. See how it's clean on the inside? Yeah. Because the throttle just stops it. See how this side of this is clean as hell? Right. This side over here is filthy. That's a lot of backfiring when it's at idle. Hmm. The O-ring appears to be above the surface, so that's not the problem. The other one on the on the carbon or the fiber piece, the gasket in between, you know, not in the manifold. Mm -hmm. it, feels about, it feels about the same as that one does. Okay. So what's the problem with this? I <laughs> get the spring back on. What holds it in place? You don't hold it in the nut. Well, I know that, but we're, how does it? <laughs> <laughs> what's the problem? I just told you. Does it you go like here? It? One end goes there, and then this one goes on on this thing. Well, I'm gonna guess at this flat spot right here. Goes, goes right against there. that. Okay. That'd be my guess. And this thing goes on or here. Or it might go over here. And it's this side over here. And that might be see, better. See how that doesn't fit? Yeah. So obviously that's not a no-go. See how that matches that perfectly? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's how it's supposed to go. Is there a mark on there? Mm -hmm. A little bit. See a little yeah. mark right there? Yeah. I don't get over and see it with the camera. There, let's see that mark right there. It's already built in. So that would go onto this. And then this here goes on here and this winds it up. Well, it goes. But it doesn't, it doesn't stay tight is what the problem is. When it goes up back to idle, this thing comes off of there. The way I had it anyways. Uh -huh. This may not have been right. That's how it goes. I like that. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. Why would it go this way? Because that's how I took it off. <laughs> It's 50 50 chance, right? That's all okay. It was on the bottom part of the. Of the you sure, you took it off that way? Yeah. Over here? Yeah. It's all okay. It would come in like this. Well, possibly like that. You sure it doesn't like, go like this? You yeah. sure it doesn't go like this? No, it goes, this, like, goes like the, this. With the set screw, it goes up against the surface there that's made for it. Right, that's how it goes. You think maybe it goes that way instead of this other way, like this, which mm -hmm. doesn't have anything no, that works? Doesn't, no, it doesn't go that way. So don't listen to you because you don't know nothing. I wasn't looking at it. See, right. it hits over here. Backwards. It doesn't work correctly at all. If it goes like this, it doesn't nothing, go like that. lines up at all. No, that way. don't work. You're know, pretty sure that doesn't work that way. Okay, so we're going to go the way I was going to do it, which mm -hmm. is this way. Just like that. Okay, that, that's, like, that's a good plan. Okay, and this spring, where's this go? Right there on the... Is that the idle screw? And where's this go? Uh, it's going to be on that groove right there, somewhere on the side. Of that. Oh, look at that. Is that a little wear mark right there? Oh, I have to the camera. Okay, so we know where it's supposed to go now. Usually when you have it wrapped around, it wraps around something. Mm -hmm. And somehow, there'll be something. See how it would work real nice like that. Put a little wear mark on there? No, but it fits. Mm-hmm. Okay, go over here if you want. You can go there too. See how it's off center? Yeah. Back over here. See how it's on center? Mm-hmm. So it probably goes there. That'd be my guess. See how it's undercut right there for some yeah. reason? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I'm going to guess it goes this way. Next thing is you want to have some wrap to it. And you notice how it's going to have to wrap to get over to here? Right. It's going to be, see it's right here right now, so that will give you tension. So my guess is it goes over that direction. See like that. And that mm -hmm. will put a hole in your thumb if you keep doing that. Yeah. So that goes over there like that. And you gotta rotate it around until it clears. Then you gotta push it around and down there like that. Excellent. Not yet. Almost. Springs up and wrapped in where it doesn't belong right now, see? Mm -hmm.
keep pushing until it feels like it's in there all the way. See it's still high on this corner for some reason. Yep. See it's trapped where it doesn't belong. Let's get some dumbass put it on the wrong side. Damn dumbass. On, on the wrong side of the chingadera. And the chingadera is in the problem. So this needs to go down further this way, see. See that works better when you do it correctly. Yep. And flat, even. So, when it's flat, you mm -hmm. probably have it correct. Okay, now what was the problem you were having? That's it. What was that? This that isn't this isn't a problem. What was the problem you're having? Well, I mean, my question was how that carbon like carbon's all getting in there, but that's another question. That's when it backfiring on. You're trying to sneak in there saying you I really had this is my this is what was giving me difficulty right here. That's why I did not want to you know, see how that goes there. Has a throttle stop? Mm-hmm. That's what that part's for. How much torque do you want to put on that? Just enough. That's probably pretty good. You think that's good? I think so. <laughs> is that how they do on the blown cars? <laughs> yep. yep. So that, uh, so I just clean that shit off of there or what? Is it wide open? That's wide open right now. Are you sure? It looks pretty even to me in the middle, isn't it? I don't know. Look at it from the side. Is it straight up and down or is it angled? Mm -hmm. Slightly angled that way. That's full throttle there? Mm hmm. Not there? Yeah. So that's not adjustable, though. Yeah, so you're stuck with what it has, right? So if you want to have 100% wide open at full stop, you're going to have to put a little welder on there and fine tune it. This is not the race bike, anyway. This isn't the racer? Mm -hmm. Now, is this angle cut in this direction or is it angle cut in that direction? It better be cut in that direction. It needs to be cut this way because it goes in the mm -hmm. hole like this. If it was going the other direction, the sharp edge would dig and it'd be wrong. That means you put the disc in backwards, dumbass. I didn't take it out. <laughs> you didn't yeah. take it out. That no. wasn't you. Mm -hmm. so now you put up the light and you look through it. Uh, see how the big air gap in there? Yeah. You know what that means, don't you? It's going to idle. That means you got a lot of air coming in for a run. You didn't. You have this camera has to look when you look at this stuff. See, it's hard to see that. Yeah. When the camera's There's looking the over here. The air gap right there. When you're looking down at this piece of paper here. Yeah, it was me looking at the thing, so like, not using the camera. I'm going to get some comments about the dumbass of the camera yeah. operator. Holding it, looking at the other things. It hurts. We didn't want to return to idle very good when I, the way I had it on earlier. Yeah, well, maybe the disc is out of whack. So, if you take your screw right here and adjust it. No, it's not hitting on it. Still got air gap? My guess is it has a big air gap. See, it has a big air gap? Mm-hmm. So that means something's not right. You know what's not right? The idle. Whatever's in the way. That's the enrichment, isn't it? My guess is that's the idle mixture. I'm sure it wasn't hitting anything. My guess is that some dumbass didn't put this thing in here correctly. So it should have no, no gap in it at all? Jeez, these things are tight. Jeez. They said they're peened over on this little factory video thing. But I don't want them being peened over. I want the things to open up. <laughs> they're on the side, aren't they? It's a lock tight. Did you hear a little pop noise? I did. That was a throttle closing. Oh, now what? The screws were just too tight on, it, making it making it bend, or what? Oh, no air now. I don't comprehend what what you just did on it. How, how does it make it go away? By just loosening the screws up. It was forced in there wrong or something? Here, close it now. Mm hmm. Dumbass who put it in last had the throttle held open. Oh. So when the throttle's open, the disc is open. So the clearance, so the disc can float around. 
not necessarily where it belongs. Oh. When you take the tension off the screws, the screw's not being used anymore. Now this, the closing is the disc jam itself in the bore. It will self-center. Then you tighten the screws up and it should stay still centered. If it does it, then there's something bent. So all I did is loosen the screws, let it, you heard it pop a little bit. Mm -hmm. That let it, it centered itself. When it popped, it came free. It, it shifted inside the disc, closed. Then I reset the screws closed, you know, with the throttle wow. still fully closed. So now the throttle, now you don't have that light through there anymore. See, it's no light coming through. Nothing it's in, closed. As it should be. Correct. Now you come back here and you put the screw on it. One, two, three, there you go. Now you should see some light through there. Yep. And that's about the right amount to make it run. Yeah. So there you go. So they had that misadjusted. So whoever was in there screwing around, screwed it up. Now the other problem is when it's like that is the air is supposed to suck in right where the mixture screw is over here. Mm -hmm. It might have been closed right there and letting it, not letting fuel in right there. It wasn't drawn mm -hmm. on the needle like it's supposed to. It might have been drawn over here with just air, no fuel. Okay. So that means the air is now being mixed. You know, the, with the fuel, it's not making air ratio. You know, it's, it's coming in just raw fuel will be puddling around in there and sucking air everywhere else. It's inconsistent. So the bike will have air flow. It have air fuel mixture burns all right, and it'll be dead lean. It'll backfire through the carburetor. If it go along, it's fine. If it go along, it'll, it'll hiccup like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be something else, but this this would just be idling the bike. It just not want to lean. It'd be, oh. it'd, it'd be lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich. Pretend if it took fuel dumping in or had the air fuel mixture going in. Okay. If it's an anomalous mixture, it will burn. If it's a just raw fuel, it don't burn. So, so then it backfires, which screws up everything again because now you get all the exhaust gas and blowing in here, and mm -hmm. that makes it run like crap. Now this carbon buildup you got in here has got quite a bit in here. Should I take some cleaner on that? Carb uh, cleaner. If you take carb cleaner, that's made to cut carbon. It'll car it'll cut that. Yeah. You the intake manifold looks almost the same. Not quite as thick. Just take a wrench like this. Goes hold it open. It's easier. Clean everything up. The butterfly and the yeah. and the, the body also. Go near the finger and knock it out. You can feel how rough it is in there. Yeah. So get all that out of there because that doesn't interfere with the mixture coming across. Okay. So you hear it's not hitting. See. Yeah. It's hitting on other stuff. That thing is on the right way, isn't it? It's cut the right direction. <laughs> what? The, the butterfly. Sounds good now. The angle, the dangle isn't the right way though, right? There's a weird noise to it. It's a pump over here, maybe something doing something. Now the accelerator pump, how much pump are you giving it? I'll use this to work this thing. See a little pump you have in it? Yeah, that's all? That's all you got. Then it goes throttle after that? Oh. So it doesn't need a whole bunch or what? So when you screw these all the way in, it shuts the pump off. When you unscrew them, it, it makes it travel further. Oh, that's a, okay. That's not the idle screw then. This is not an idle screw. This is an idle. This is an accelerator pump. Yeah. See how much pump movement you got? Yep. You got about 50 thou. Okay, if you come over here, screw in a couple turns. She's not even moving. Shut off. Well. Okay, now you go the other direction. I'll give it more. And I screwed about three turns from where it was. See how much accelerator pump you got now? Yeah. There's like an eighth of an inch in there. Way more than there was. Right, so that's just flooding a piss out of the fuel. <laughs> now the spray nozzle, which is right behind the emulsion tube in there, mm -hmm. you can rotate that to make it shoot dead center. Right. It should go... It actually has like a, a smile cut in the damn thing, so when it comes up, it shoots out a flat flame, a flat, yeah. not just round balls, it goes sideways and shoots out sideways. Right. So that fan should be a horizontal fan shooting right in the motor. Okay. And if it's off to one side or the other, you rotate the screw. There's a, uh, there's a screw under here. That, that, whatever, that tube, or whatever you want to call it, has a, a screwdriver slide on so you can rotate it. It's held by an O-ring. It's underneath the, uh, it's in the bowl, though, right? It's inside of here. Yeah. So you rotate that until it shoots correctly. Okay. You want it to be as centered as you can, uh, the, the mist, yeah, the way it comes out working. of there. So if you want a lot of accelerator pump to flood the damn plugs out, you hmm. screw that thing way out. Otherwise, you screw the damn thing back in. I like running when they're just about off. Even a little tiny bit? Just a little bit. That's that's plenty for me. Okay. Now, if you want them dumbass, you just want to hit it right at a dead idle, just 
like that, you would have a lot of squirt. If you rev it up to a couple, you know, 1400 RPM or so, and then whack it, 1500, then you're fine. You don't even need an accelerator pump. So it's a matter of how you ride. If you ride like a stupid two-stroke, you better have a lot of pump. The problem is when you're doing that, you're constantly dumping fuel into this motor. Mm -hmm. Every time you're going back and forth on that throttle, see how much throttle that is? That's right. nothing. Yeah. See how much that's moving? But if you were doing that, if you're giving so, back and forth throttle So if you're riding back and forth on the freeway like that, because the road's rough, mm -hmm. you're constantly just pouring fuel in that motor. Dumping raw gas it's in there. Raw though. gas, and you're rich in a cob. And that's just pumping like crazy. So that's why you don't want that to do that. Okay. So this pump is bottomed out. Right there, it bottoms out. That's how much pump we got. <laughs> that's it, huh? Just when you just hit it, and that's it. Yeah. When you're open, all this right here, when you're doing like this, there's no pump action. It's not doing anything. So. Right. It's only right off that idle. So, like I said, I shut them off pretty much as much as you can. That still works. So this here, you adjust this now. You want to make sure this is not bent. You want to make sure some dumbass didn't crank that thing down like a damn screw in there and broke the inside of the carburetor out. Mm. That's what happens. Yeah. It also brings a needle all the hell. Kind of dirty looking dude. Yeah, so you need to wipe this thing off, get it clean. So once again, if it's got a bunch of carbon on it, it doesn't mm -hmm. distribute the fuel correctly. See, most of it all came off. Yeah. So I just screw this thing all the way down. Right there, it quits. Yeah. I can I can cram another. All the mm -hmm. way through, if I want. See how it sticks through a little bit. Yep. Some guy just asked me why it sticks through so much. Cause that's the way it's made. Quit mm -hmm. trucking with it. So. I'm getting no air right there, though, right? I go half a turn. One, one and a half, and like one and three quarter. See now it's not sticking through so far. See now it's not sticking through at all. It's below, right? It's it's barely. Just barely touching it. So now you go ahead and start the bike up. Get your idle speed set to where it'll idle. Mm -hmm. Then you take the screw and you screw it until it doesn't want to run no more, and you unscrew it until the highest RPM. Then you take it, reset your idle speed, and do it again. There's going to be a sweet spot, probably about like this much, where it could be anywhere in that spot. So this is lean, this is rich. So depending on where you want the fuel mixture to be, if you want to have a lot of acceleration without the uh, accelerator pump on, you're a little rich. If you want to be really the best mileage you can get, you lean the thing out. Okay. Run on the lean side and shut the damn pump off. We're just about off. So I just take the accelerator pump. You keep whacking it, whatever you want it to be at, and then you, whatever speed you want to whack it at. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you want to really whack it hard, that's when you have the pump. If you just drive like normal whacking, you keep screwing it until it starts being hesitant, and you unscrew it until it takes the throttle nicely and stop. Okay. No extra. And you probably can be lean this out another turn or so before it won't take the throttle 100%. All right. Other than that, it looks all right, huh? Well, I don't know what's inside the damn thing. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the O-ring looked all right to you, huh? Did you have that blue O-ring in the middle of the port where it belongs? I didn't take the bowl off. All I did was take that... that where did this piece of crap come from? It's already on my bike when I bought it. You bought it? Yeah. So you're a dumbass and never looked inside your carburetor? I have not. Why not? I just pulled it off for the first time today. You just found out it was all screwed up. Does the accelerator pump even work? Did you ever look yes, inside the Yes, I did. I did watch the accelerator pump work, yes. Is this screw tight? I will find out in a minute. Tight. What about this one? That was pretty good, too. Is this fall loose that falls off when you're running down the road? Nope. You sure? Not so far, it hasn't, anyway. Tight. I guess they're tight if you're wimpy. <laughs> Didn't have any uh, seepage on it or nothing. Didn't have the Tetro torque on it. Cha-ching, what's inside there? Gas. 
Should have been much dumped a lot of it on the floor anyway. Well, that's why it runs like shit. See a blue o ring on there? On the top of that chingus? No. Supposed to be one on there, huh? Well, what keeps the air from leaking? Not stuck up in there, nothing? No. Stuck up what, your butt? <laughs> Not in the carburetor where it belongs. So that's a massive tuning problem. There's where your, most of your spitting's coming from. So between the uh, O-ring leak and the uh, throttle disc being in the wrong, that's where all your spitting's coming from. There's usually reasons why these things don't work right. Usually because some dumbass was in there working on it. See that there? Uh -huh. Guess where that came from? On top of that other thing? No. This O-ring you're talking about? Where'd that, where'd it come from? Well, originally it was on there, but it's been sitting there for a while. You think it just fell off when we took it off? I don't think so. Usually they stay put. I think whoever worked on it before me was <clears throat> dropped out and was laying in there. And they didn't know there was supposed to be anything in there because they're stupid. It's about right for float level. See, it's spring loaded, so we'll go further with weight. See. Yeah. Springs over there. Stops right there. It's a little low. You can run a little bit higher, but that's where they like it. I usually like them closer to this way here, more fuel on them. But that's probably closer to where it's supposed to be. See the uh, stuff in there? I can't now. A bunch of. You know, just, See a yeah. monkey in there I just cleaned out for you? That's the, the jet hole? I mean, the, how you get the jet out of the well, thing? Well, the fuel is sucking out of that hole. Yeah. It's right next to it. It's just dried up fungi in there. It's all clean now. So you gotta make sure this O-ring is compresses and seals. It'll probably work. It's an old one, but it'll be fine. This is still movable, so it's fine. Okay, this is a... Uh, uh, let's see, these are not adjustable. This is your accelerator pump here. Oh, yeah, so where's that window? So this there? is not, oh, this one has the, the McCuny carburetor has the adjustment screw on it. This is a hex. Oh. You rotate it. You just try to turn it? Yeah. The HSR 40 is a, 42 is what I was thinking of. Make sure this is not bent. Doesn't want to roll because it's full of crap, but it's straight. Yeah, this thing is not doing much. So this boot is, is cracked or the what? boot is junk. There's nothing there. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. So you need a new boot. You got a new boot? No. Do you want a new boot? Yeah. Do you have any money? <laughs> I think I got twenty-five. I can spend tonight. You got twenty-five cents? Uh, it might be enough. Good shot. Yeah. Not doing much good to keep the moisture and the dirt out. It might be a little loose, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, the SNS has theirs and you have the Cayenne carburetor. Guess what? Cayenne? Same part. Really? Yeah. Wonder where they got it from. Yeah. Use parts. New parts. Oh, rebuild kits or what? Or just parts? These are parts, not rebuild kits. Rebuild kits don't come with these when you have one that's broken because some dumbass didn't put the air cleaner on correctly. Yeah. So you have to buy a new one. No. And so I have two because guess why? It's a <laughs> thing for dumbasses to do. It's like most things, if you're forcing it, you're probably something wrong. Yep. So these are. Those O rings? Or the. Boot? Accelerator pump boot for Kaheen carburetor. Hmm. And then this one here, see, is S, &S accelerator pump boot. It's the same part. Same thing. Good enough. They're both probably expensive. 
Yeah, but the SNS one's a hell of a lot more than the other one. Yeah? You mean buy it from Harley? So there's the last one of those. Unless you want the genuine one. No, I'll take the key and Pretty close to being the same, aren't they? They kind of look the same, don't they? Yep. See you on my last uh, inferior one? Mm hmm. Only because the price is better. Oh, it's the same price. You don't think I'm stupid? I'm going to sell it cheaper than <laughs> you. <laughs> I doubt it's even any inferior either, though. Same thing. Now, this one here, we didn't clean the crap off this here. Sorry, I was snoozing. There, now it's new. Much better. Not a roll better. Oh, look at that. And it doesn't fall like it used to. Appears to be tight. That's good. Only if you want it to be tight. Side you want out this side or this side? Uh, you know, I don't care. The other side a little, a little less worn. This could be not just Does like it that. really matter? Probably You're not. Adjustable. I was not bent, right? Yeah, bending is bad. Okay, what jet you got in this thing? Let's go a little on there too. See all the dried up stuff coming off. You see the number? When's the last time you clean up? Put some fresh gas in this bike. I put good gas in it all the time. Yeah, well. I don't know if it has a filter in it. I don't think there's no you filter see a in hole it. Through that? No. <laughs> None. Why don't you look through the camera? It's nothing. It's you dark. See, see any light through that? It's dark, man. Well, do you think maybe that's uh, not a good sign of jetty correctly? It could be why it's not running good either. Now, if this one's plugged up, we got a big problem. That appears That's to have some light through that one. Through that one. Yep. Okay, I'm thinking this one's okay. I'm thinking this one here is a little uh, not quite at the speed. What is that, intermediate? That's Good. your low speed, yeah. Low speed? That's coinciding with the bad butterfly deal and everything. Oh, huh? yeah. It's a 29.5. 29.5? So that means it should take a 29.5 thousand drill. You got one of those in your back pocket? I don't. Why not? It was too small. <laughs> you get one What's nice about SNS, the drill sizes, the jet sizes are actually pretty close with drill sizes. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we pull out a 29.2. I think it's blinking on top of the screen, E95. Is that normal? Who cares? Okay. See over here, you pull out a 29.2 drill. Oh, man. That's the second one from the end. Those are tiny. I need to make a little box for you. Oh, these are big ones. The small ones are underneath. Now, if you take the drill part and run it through, it can do some damage. If you run the shaft through only, and just let it kind of flush it out. Hear it squeaking as I'm going through. Yeah, tight fit, huh? Okay, so the hole went through now. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the drilling part, because there's a bunch of crap on there. So I'm just going up and down. I'm rotating around a little bit. Trying to knock off the goo that's in there. Now, obviously, if I had some cleaning material, it would be better. Are clear? Yeah. Now I'm gonna flip it around and put this see and see if it squeaks anymore. So there's more clearance now. See how it's looser too, but it's not squeaking. Yeah. Okay, so now it might be closer to a 28 now than what it was. Uh -huh. It was plugged before. <laughs> Still don't really see any light. Anything caught your hand? Anything caught in your hand? No, no grease, nothing. Still don't see no light through the damn thing. Should at least see a light through it. Well, if your drill bit was short, though, it would just be clogging up at the end, wouldn't it? Is it longer than the jet? No. Yeah, but the jet's only right in this area. This is undercut up in here. It starts to go. It starts to cut down in size right there. Mm. And this one starts right there. So between here and here is where the jet actually orifices at. Hold on, dumbass. So 
You go down smaller, they get smaller. I like that. Don't break my camera stand. Oh. Got light? Here's got a hole in it now. Let there be light. Even though the drill was going through, it still had a lot of residue in there. Yeah. Can you guys see that now? I can see the light. <laughs> okay, now this one here. I don't know what size main jet you had in here, but it's got a pretty good hole in it. That's probably like a 72. It's all corroded, you can't even see it. Yeah. Or it's not even the right thing. Dirty. Get something clean. <laughs> this used to be clean, the shirt. Brand new one. I didn't say it was new. It was new today. It was clean. Plain old, old, old lead That's today. The you can tell I was working on the milling machine by the. Yep. Where's that? I don't see it's buffed and polished now, like your boots. I don't think this is an original jet. Can't read it still? No, yeah, there's a 7 and then something that's a. I don't think it's 7D. Or something. It might be a 75, it might be a 72, it might just be a 70. Okay, so remember I told you just jet size and drill size are about the same? Yeah. So you gotta find something about a 70 thousandth hole in it, preferably. This one here just happens to be a 70 right here. Definitely close to a 70. Do a little rubbing. Now drills don't cut too much when you're on the side. They're made to cut on the tip. So you can actually rub stuff like this clean and not do much damage. It will scratch it, but it makes a difference. Okay, so that one was a 70. Where's our 70? Yeah. Right there. Right where I can see it. Yeah, right there. This is 73, so it's bigger than a 73, so that might be a 5 I'm looking next at. Next one over, next gap. You mean the one that says 73? Mm -hmm. This one says 78. Too big. Oh, it went through. <laughs> so that's an 8. Well, you only have half a number. The top part of the 8 is not there. Like a three. Oh, the top part's not there. Yeah. Now this is clean, now it was dirty. Now it's, see now it goes in a lot easier. You go right through here, I'll clean the rest of the crud off so you get maximum amount of flow. See now it goes through that, because see we knocked off the crap that was on it. Yep. Had corrosion or goo. <laughs> so you need to get some of that gas tank fuel injection cleaner crap yeah. and start using it. Okay. It'll cut these things, stuff out for you. Okay, 78 on your bike is extremely big. So what more you got in this one? Stock 80 inch. Stock 80? 80 evolution. There's nothing, no cameo, no nothing? I can't tell you that yet. I haven't explored that far. Are you trying to lose that? Yeah. Good job. Okay. This is way big. Okay. What do you got for an exhaust? A super trap. It's way big. Okay. You think 72 or something like that or what? To be safe, we'll do a 72, but it'll probably wind up being more like a 70 at that. Yeah. A normal 80 inch jump. Easy, you, got, you run a 31. When you start getting up to 72 or bigger jets, easy just goes up to a 31 jet. Because oh. it wants fuel all over the place, not right. just in one spot. But this is a 29.5 that was plugged, and you're riding around with a plugged jet. Probably didn't have hardly anything flowing through it. Probably not. So this is 70 here, so this is 72. They're marked here on the end, it's hard to read, but if you go like this, you can you got sharp. Hear, hear the sharpness? Mm-hmm. It's because it's used. <laughs> Screwdriver, huh? 72. There you go. 
This one here is a 78, which goes way over here. Want it in there? No, you don't want it? No. Well, no. You're going to put that one in there? Well, I don't know what you need. I'm just starting. I'm just guessing. We didn't pull this out. It probably wouldn't hurt to pull it. Just check it. Sometimes you get surprised when you pull these things apart. These have holes in them too. They're supposed to be open. Alright. You only have them on one side only. Can't see them, so we're just going to go put a drill in there and see if they're clean. My guess is they probably got junk in them like everything else. We've got stuff so far today. But you know exactly what size these are, don't you? No. The little tiny ones? Well, let's just 28, say... 28? smaller than 28? Let's just say this is not going in. <laughs> what number is that one? 80. 80. Or not 80, it's... Uh, what is it, 60 the smallest one on these? Number kit? Yeah, 60 is the smallest, which is 40 thousandths. So that's too big. This is 61 through 80. And this one will start at probably 38 or something. 39. So 40. Is that 60 on the other one we had just now? It's a number 60, which is 40 thousandths. This one's a 39, does not fit. Thousands. Skip a couple. Once again, I'm using the shank, not the cutting part. There's some crud in there, huh? Well, you heard it go through, see now it's loose. Yeah. So this was plugged up. See, once it's in there, it's loose. So. Like I said, I'm using a shank, not the drill. Get that one right there. Okay, that was um, 35 thousands. Hardest problem with these is my fingers don't have enough feel with all the calluses. You pull up two at a time. <laughs> okay, 36 did go in. Pretty tight though. It is going in. So I don't know what size it's supposed to be, so. You know, if these holes get bigger, it affects when the main jet comes on. Okay, I'm going to clean that out with the side of the drill. It's just like gum on there is what when you're like get, yeah. getting out of it. See now it's loose there. Yeah. It was tight. So these go up in one thousand increments each drill. Oh. That was the big one. Fit now. 39. So I thought these were 40s, I thought they would go. I thought I could use the index. But now that I got the crud out, I can. I feel loose in there now? 39? It's got drag on it. It'd probably go 40. Ooh. Down there somewhere. That didn't fall in the hot sun thing there. So this is a uh, 
it doesn't want to go in. See after it drops down, now it's loose. I'm not rotating, I'm just pushing straight in. That would not open a hole up by pushing straight down. Mm, good. I'm not that strong. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 38 pounds. Come on. Now I'm going to try the 40, I mean the 39. Now I'm holding the sharp edges on this side when I'm pushing. It's the dull side. Goes now. Got some pretty hard varnish that was on that. All clear now. It'd probably take the 40 out drill. But that's close enough. I'm going to kill it. So that was pretty, uh, pretty plugged up. So. Everything. <laughs> Do this. You can also feel the air blowing through the whole time. Yeah. You want to feed them all to be even. Okay, well you definitely need to run some carb cleaner through this stuff. Yeah. Or not carb cleaner, but the uh, fuel injection yeah, cleaner. cleaner. Yeah, I'd run half a bottle through this bike. Because that'll clean all the circuits in here. Because I've had the stuff where I clean out before and it still don't run right because you can't clean all the way through the whole carburetor. Right, but that stuff actually works though. Huh? If you want to dip it and let them put some dip, that'll help. But I don't like dipping stuff too much. Yeah, it'll, it eventually it will clean it out and make it clean out better. So, we got that cleaned out, this is cleaned out. No O-rings on none of that stuff, huh? Nope, no O-rings. Alright, so that's all done. We already have previously adjusted the screws over there, so we're okay. Looks like everything's all in there now. Looks like this is pretty filthy, but... Yeah, I'll get that cleaned up when I get home. Okay, so there's our o rings in place now. Sure that's in there and stays in there. See, it doesn't fall off. Yeah. Your soap rod is still in there. <laughs> Get these all started before you torque any of them down. That way the float bolt can center. Once it's already down, then you go ahead and tighten it up. You can bring them all down just a little bit. Then I torque them. Tatro torque. Factory torque. Now I can strip them out if I want, but there's a torque that you have to learn what it is. It works. 
turn the springs on there good. Butterfly's closing. Oh, not closing anymore, but... It's closing. We well, got, it's closing. Well, good. We got idle on it right now. It's closing to the stop. Yeah. I don't know if the uh, diaphragm's working. I'm assuming it is, but who knows? That's something to go. It was squirting gas before. I know that. Yeah, it should still do it. All right, so you're good to go. Slapping cool. on the bike. Oh, now no, these O-rings here, you want to make sure there's no cracks in them. Yeah. These you can kind of feel them if they are cracked. I can feel it's still soft. And it's above surface. The roughest place is through here. So we'll look at it for See if there's any kind of little micro tears going on in there. No tears, a lot of grit and or grime. A lot of grime on there. I would take it out, but I'll probably break it in half if I do. See, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Now all that little stuff will make it not seal real good. Is it a little piece of rubber or what? Yeah. I don't even put new ones in there, it's up to you, but I don't know what they're supposed to look like. These the right ones? They're kind of no, small. they're the wrong ones. They're kind of small. No, I'm showing you the wrong ones. <laughs> See how they're shiny and not full of goo like yeah, those? Yeah, me two of those too. That's what they are. All for the other side do. So anyway, those are new ones, so... I'll take two. And you got a lot of money, huh? I hope not, I have enough. Big spender. So, you got two of those, don't use them. Don't use them? Don't lose them. Don't lose them, okay. You don't use them until you put them on the bike. Right. And remember, the rubber don't go against the rubber <laughs> when you do it. Yeah. Flip no. it over so it seals the manifold. Too. Right. I've seen that done like this. I bet. <laughs> Now the next thing is you make sure you get a little free plane your cables when you put them all in there so the throttle can actually return all the way. Yeah, I did. So we'll do that. So what do you got in here for an air cleaner? It's got something weird on it. It's a stock air cleaner, but it has an adapter on it. It goes under here, flat, just a flat piece of aluminum. For what? So the stock air cleaner will fit on it, so it has, has you know, teardrop on Oh, it's an adapter? Because I haven't seen this version yeah. before, so. Yeah. So you're not using the SNS manifold of the air cleaner? No. All right. Anyway, so you're going to try that jet out, and then after that, we can go up or down depending on what it feels like. My guess is it'll probably drop to a 70, but okay. we don't know. Read the plugs. These are the new O-rings here, if you need new, new, old one, new ones. So I think yours is probably going to seal, but that would be the next thing to replace. But okay. Having it in the correct spot will probably help. <laughs> I imagine so. And fixing all the other stuff and unplugging the jets will help. So you need to get a little cleaner in there, clean that. Now for the fuel injection cleaner. There's two of them that were good. Oh, Lucas, yeah. It works, huh? This is a high cleaning fluid in it, and the other one I think was red line or something like that. The other one had a lot of stuff in it. Okay. The active ingredient that does the cleaning, this has a, those two have the highest amount as of a couple years ago. So get this one. This is easy to find. The other one's not as easy to come up with. Yeah, you can get it all over the place. But you run a, you can double this up for the first couple times because you're really dirty. And after a couple tank fulls, drop back to the recommended number. Okay. And run through about a third of a bottle. And that should be enough. And that'll do it. And then after that, you can put stable in it or some other gas stuff to help stabilize the fuel so it doesn't gum turn to crab like it does? Well the alcohol and stuff won't eat up the aluminum carburetor. Oh right. So you run that through like every other tank full you run that stuff through there. Mm -hmm. That's what this crap over here is for that nobody ever uses because it's stupid. Well this is a Tribodine one here which does three things. Uh, they got, I know they had a fuel injector cleaner thing. Stable's over there. Stable. So you run a little bit of this in there. After you clean every other tank full, put some of that in there. It'll keep the tank from rusting up and do all the other stuff. Because this goes up in the air, so it keeps the tank from rusting. Oh, it helps it, really? The other stuff only, the other brands, it only keeps it from rust or 
from getting bad uh, gas level down. Mm -hmm. This will atomize it and goes up inside and keep the tank from rusting. That's good. FXR supply. especially had a problem with that. This one here is your, this is a uh, Tribodyne. It does all the same, cleaner, octane booster, and stabilizer. Mm. The new one they got that's uh, coming out, it might be out now, I don't have it yet. You didn't have it in the last order I did. It's going to have three times the, the the boosting effect, the octane booster effect, the new oh. stuff, the upgraded one. So it's got the newest one. Cool. Now, this is in a steel can because it eats plastic. Mm. So if you buy octane booster, it comes in a little plastic container. It ain't worth a damn. It ain't worth a crap. It's got to be in a steel can to be the good stuff. Yeah. And we so, got it here at Tatro Machine. So anyway, that's all this stuff. That's why I buy that stuff and use it, and it works. So, that'll keep you from having these issues down the road again. Yep. So if you want to continue having problems, then don't use it. Where'd the battery come from? If you run the bike, it was in your carburetor, wasn't it? <laughs> Somewhere. If you... Um, you see, if you keep clean gas in all the time, ride a bike a lot, you know, the, the good gas stations will have a lot of uh, stuff in there. Texaco and Chevron, Union, those have a lot of cleaners in their fuel. Easy going Chevron. My, they, will keep, they will keep, they will help keep things clean also, but it doesn't hurt to run the stabilizer every other tank enough. full. Okay. It's just one more thing to keep the system clean because it's... It does matter. Here we don't have too much problem with the alcohols, but in other parts of the country it's really bad. Don't they put alcohol in the gas in half the year, though? Like from January to June or something? We always like have alcohol. Everything always has alcohol in all the time. It's just how much. The oh. thing is, it's not just the alcohol. It's the other stuff that goes in there they put in there also. Right. California, we don't have the super corrosion issues like you do in other states. We still have it, but it's not as bad. Okay. So, I've seen issues like that before. But anyway, you're good to go. Try it out. See what happens. Okay. Apologize now for the bad camera work too. No you don't. <laughs>